Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So what we have, we have two matrix spaces, x1, d1 and x2, d2. Okay. And both are complete matrix spaces. This is given thing. With the help of x1 and x2, we have a product matrix space x1 cross x2 with this matrix d double dash, which is defined in this way. So we have to prove that x1 cross x2, that is also a complete matrix space. Given thing is x1 and x2 are complete and we have to prove that x1 cross x2, this product matrix space is also complete. Tell me first when we say the matrix space is complete. If every Cauchy sequence is convergent, then we say the matrix space is complete. That means here we have to take any arbitrary Cauchy sequence of this matrix space and we will prove that it is convergent. So let us start. Okay. So let, let. Uh, xn, I am considering that sequence be xn. So actually xn is a sequence in a product matrix space. So it will be like this n comma bn ba Cauchy sequence in this product matrix space x1 cross x2 comma d double dash. Okay. So I have taken any arbitrary Cauchy sequence in this product matrix space and we have to prove that it is convergent. So xn is defined in this way n comma bn. Obviously n is a sequence okay in x1 and bn is a sequence in x2 okay. So in this way we have this sequence xn. We have to prove it is convergent. Obviously I am going to use the definition of uh, epsilon definition right. So let us take one epsilon first. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given any arbitrary epsilon I have taken this uh, this is a given information or the information we have let me write we have xn is con Cauchy right so xn is Cauchy so we can use the definition of Cauchy sequence the definition of Cauchy sequence says for given epsilon epsilon already we have taken so let me mention therefore for above epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number n. The definition of Cauchy sequence says for given epsilon, that means for this epsilon, there exists a fixed natural number n such that d double dash, since this is the product matrix, xn comma xm less than epsilon for all n m greater than or equal to capital N, right? So by definition of Cauchy sequence, definitely we can write this one. But see here, I'm going to do a small adjustment. Instead of epsilon, I will write root alpha epsilon. See alpha is a positive real number. So root alpha, we are considering a positive square root. Product of two positive numbers is again positive number. So definitely we can take write this one. Getting? Uh, so let us use the definition of d double dash. So therefore, okay. So let me write first d double dash xn means what n comma bn let me write n comma bn comma xm means m comma bm okay less than root alpha epsilon okay copy paste this condition we need to write everywhere so that's why I'm writing in this way okay so we have this space let us use okay let us continue now what will I do I will follow the definition of d double dash the definition says root okay alpha d1 square so x1 y1 that means elements of first component so here elements in first component nm a n a m plus beta d2 square so d2 is operated on elements of second component x2 y2 so here elements in second component b and bm so bn bm less than root alpha epsilon actually this condition should be written at each step okay but uh, we don't have much space so that's why i'm uh, write that condition at the end so to remove square root i will take square of both sides let us see what will happen if i take square of both sides alpha d1 square nm plus beta d2 square b n b m less than if you take it square alpha epsilon square right so actually we are adding two non-negative terms 
squares are there alpha beta both are positive so that means we are adding multiplying non negative terms and their sum is less than alpha epsilon square that means each of them is less than alpha epsilon square so this one is less than alpha epsilon square second part is also less than alpha epsilon square so i will consider just first part only alpha d1 square a n a m less than alpha epsilon square so alpha is a positive real number so we can cancel out from both sides okay i'm going to cancel alpha from both sides okay so let us see what will happen so therefore d1 square a n a m less than epsilon square let us take square root of both sides so that's why d1 a n m less than epsilon with this condition for all n m greater than or equal to capital n but see this is definition of cauchy sequence definitely it is a cauchy sequence so that's why what can we declare therefore a n is cauchy basically it is cauchy it is a sequence in x1 d1 so that's why i should mention it is cauchy in x1 d1 in the same way we can prove that second sequence bn that is also cauchy just we st we should start with root beta epsilon okay if you want to prove that bn is also cauchy you should start with here root beta epsilon and you can continue in the same way just you need to consider the second term and easily you can prove that bn is also cauchy sequence so here i will mention similarly similarly we can prove bn is cauchy okay there is no more space to write just make a screenshot of it then i will go further see let me mention bn is cauchy in x2 d2 okay so we proved a n is cauchy in x1 d1 and b n is cauchy in x2 d2 but the given information is x1 d1 and x2 d2 both are complete matrix spaces right so this is so much important information let me mention but but x1 d1 and x2 d2 okay are complete matrix spaces so these are complete matrix spaces they have mentioned x complete matrix spaces getting so complete matrix spaces means what every cauchy sequence is convergent so these are complete matrix spaces so that's why n is also convergent and bn is also convergent so let me mention therefore a n and b n are convergent sequences right so these are convergent sequences since every cauchy sequences every cauchy sequence is convergent these are cauchy sequences so that's why these are convergent sequences and these are convergent that means definitely they will converge to some point so let us call it as n converges to a in x1 d1 and bn converges to b in x2 d2 okay so this thing we are assuming these are convergent sequences so that's why they are converging to some points we are calling them as a and b so with the help of a and b i am going to take one new point x a comma b which is obviously in x1 cross x2 first point is in x1 second is in x2 so x will be in x1 comma x1 cross x2 you remember we started with any cauchy sequence xn and we have to prove it is convergent so now we will prove the given sequence that original sequence xn will converge to this point x okay so let us start to do just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so let us start to prove that the sequence xn will converge to this point x okay i will start with this information again so we have what is the thing we have n converges to a in x1 d1 okay i will follow the definition of convergent sequence for given epsilon but see at the beginning of this proof we have already taken one epsilon so i will use the same epsilon therefore for above epsilon greater than 0 there exists a natural number n such that such that 
d1 it is in d1 so that's why d1 an comma a less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n right so let me call it as n1 n1 this is my n1 right but see here we need to do some small adjustment uh, that adjustment will be uh, epsilon by let me think what we need to do uh, to root to alpha okay root to alpha okay so this thing i'm going to consider let me call it as one see the first information i use let us go for the second information we have what is second information bn converges to b in x x2 d2 so again by definition of convergent sequence for above above that means initially we have already considered one epsilon same epsilon we are using again and again there exist natural number n2 such that d2 bn comma b less than will you guess what i need to write adjustment right epsilon is obviously there in a definition but just for adjustment i am going to consider epsilon by root 2 beta for all n greater than or equal to n2 okay so with the help of this information i could write it okay uh, but the one problem is there that statement one is true for n1 the second is true for n2 we we have to use both statements simultaneously both inequalities simultaneously what will i do i will take the maximum of n1 and n2 then both of them will be true for that n so let n0 is equal to maximum of n1 and n2 then 1 and 2 will be true for this n0 i hope it is visible to you okay i have written at the bottom so 1 and 2 will be true for this n0 so definitely without any fear we can use both inequalities okay for that n0 just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so now we are at the crucial part of this proof okay uh, so let us consider so what is our target our target is to prove that xn that sequence xn converges to x right in matrix space this x1 cross x2 d double dash so i should take d double dash xn comma x we have to prove it is less than epsilon then we can declare xn converges to x this is equal to d double dash my xn is defined in this way n comma bn and x is defined in this way a comma b what will i do i will follow the definition of d double dash it says root is there alpha is there d1 square d1 is operating on elements in first component so here the elements in first component n and a plus beta is there d2 square right d2 is operating on second elements of second component so here bn and b we have bn and b okay so this is equal to uh see let me write less than strictly less than root alpha so d1 n a we have seen already this thing its value is less than epsilon by root 2 alpha so epsilon by root 2 alpha but see square is there so i should write square plus beta so d2 square d2 b and b less than epsilon by epsilon by root 2 beta but see square is there so that's why i should write square for all n greater than or equal to n naught okay since both of them are true for this n naught so that's why i could write it this is equal to let us simplify uh, actually we should mention from 1 and 2 there is no more space so yes so i'm not writing that thing alpha if you take square epsilon square square root will get cancelled to alpha beta epsilon square square root will get cancelled to beta okay no more space just make a screenshot so what will happen this alpha alpha will get cancelled so this is equal to root epsilon square by 2 here also beta beta will get cancelled 
epsilon square by 2 so their sum will be epsilon square 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 root cancel epsilon so finally what we got d double dash x n x we started with this one and we have got this strictly inequality less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n but see this is definition of convergence sequence therefore x n converges to x in x1 cross x2 comma d double dash that means we started with any arbitrary Cauchy sequence and we proved that it is convergent in this matrix space so that's why this is property of complete matrix space every Cauchy sequence is convergent therefore I can mention therefore every Cauchy sequence is convergent in this matrix space x1 cross x2 comma d double dash and such matrix space is said to be complete matrix space if every Cauchy sequence is convergent and we are getting same so that's why we can declare therefore x1 cross x2 comma d double dash is complete matrix space so in this way we proved that it is a complete matrix space okay so yes solution is over just make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you